Take me home, take me home to the land of the Pecos. Near that stream, let me dream neath the sky. This old heart keeps on beating, repeating fond echoes of the brave and the bold riding. During the 1870s, the wildest spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. Lang Tree, this is my town, lying warm and peaceful in the desert sun. No sign of excitement in this community. Usually I've got the law and order right under my thumb, and have everything under control. But down here in Southwest Texas, things are not always what they seem. You take this spot, for example, about eight miles out of town, You owe me for six horses, Ted. I told you the deal is off. They're not the horses I bought. They're the horses I showed you. They were not. Are you calling me a liar? Not exactly. I just say you made a mistake. Let it go at that. Ted can't even sell those horses. They're skin and bone. I don't know what your game is, but I'm not playing. Now, pay up. You wouldn't talk so loud if the judge wasn't on your side. Look, the judge has nothing to do with this. But I have to hold still for anybody jiffing me. Easy, boys. We can't shoot the judge's deputy. It wouldn't be polite. Now, about this horse deal. You ready to call it off? No. You'll pay for him. One way or another. I'm anxious to know what Judge Bean will say about this. Let's go to town and find out. rode over to your place, Ted. I saw him. Did he get back here yet? No, not that I know of. I haven't seen him around anyway. The judge here? Yeah, he'll be out in a minute. Is something wrong? Well, that'll be for the judge to decide. Well, if it's up to the judge, you're in good shape. He's always willing to help. So you think he's a fair man, do you? Well, I certainly do. Well, trot him out, because right now I'll give him a chance to prove it. Roy. The shot came through the door. Well, whoever did it can't be too far away. That shot must have come from in here. Oh, I was afraid this was going to happen. You must have been pretty close outside there, Bert. I was down the street near the Hitchin Post. Let's see your gun.
long have you been here? Four or five minutes, I guess. Bert and I just rode in with Ted. Let's see your gun. What? Come on. What are you doing, Judge? Keeping in practice? In case I turn out to be an outlaw? Ted Sloan just been shot. You're kidding. Look like you knew he was walking into a trap. He sure did. You any idea who did it? There's your man. There must be some mistake. How can you defend a man before you know if he's guilty or not? We know Jeff's not a killer. I don't get this talk at all. You think I killed him, is that it? Yeah, that's it. I didn't do it. I had a little business with Ted, a horse deal. We had words and he slapped my face. Shot my mouth off, but that doesn't mean I killed him. You got any proof? You can't just imagine a man committed murder. I knew we'd have a mighty slim chance with the judge here. How about checking your deputy's gun? Sure, why not? Jeffy gun. I used one bullet for a rattlesnake. Let's see. Aren't you gonna hold him for killing Ted? Well, men have taken shots at Rattlers before. Maybe he's telling the truth. All right, Judge, now I'll take over. Nobody's gonna kill Ted and get away with it. Now, wait a minute. I'll wait for nothing. I'm gonna kill you if it's the last thing I do. Get your hands away from that gun. Now, stop this, Bert. I'm the law around here. I don't like your kind of law, Judge. Come on, you. Now, wait a minute, Bert. That'd be just plain murder. Depends on who pulls the trigger, eh, Judge? I'll give your deputy back to you. When I get through with him. Well, hello, Miss Higgins. I'll have your order ready in a minute. <laughs> I got an order for you. Drop them guns. You heard what the judge said. Drop the gun. No matter how we feel, a judge can't take sides. Even though one side's already formed an opinion without knowing all the facts. We know all we need to know. I was standing there right alongside of Ted. Jeff here threatening him. That don't mean a thing. What about that law you were so proud to bring to Langtree? I'll give you a sample of it right now. Yeah. Let me have your gun. What? Let me have your gun. They didn't prove that Jeff had anything to do with it. Look, I'm not accusing him of murder, just suspicion of murder. Blackstone wrote a whole book on it, sort of a technicality. You know I had nothing to do with Ted Sloan's murder. Yeah, the judge can't be partial. Let's have your gun. on the inside, look it out. Well, I guess my uncle thought you'd be safer in here. I was sure the judge didn't think I had anything to do with it. Well, you know, you can be more sure of it now. He stayed up practically all night trying to find a lead on the real killer. I wish I could help. There's not much I can do in here. That 
Whoever fired those shots could be the one the judge is looking for. You're probably right, Jeff. I'll see what I can find out. Watch yourself, Letty. Don't you worry about me. the trial. You can't have a trial just like that. You've got to give both sides time to get evidence one way or another. being honest for a change, Judge. What do you mean? I know you're going to do everything you can to protect that deputy of yours. I'll do everything I can to protect any innocent person. Mm. We know all this justice talk was just so much bunk. Ted was my friend and Jeff killed him. Doesn't make any difference if there's going to be a trial or not. Jeff's going to pay for Ted's life with his own. Uncle Roy, I let Jeff out. I was afraid something would happen to him. There's been no trouble. Well, someone took a shot at him this morning when I brought him his breakfast. Shot at Jeff in jail? Yes, and I think it was Bert. I saw him come out from the rear of the jail. While he was in here talking to you, I examined his rifle, and a shell had been fired. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't want to talk in front of him, and all of a sudden you were gone. But did Jeff know you think it was Bert that shot at him? Yes. And there's another reason, Uncle Roy. Someone's got to find out who killed Ted Sloan. Well, I think you can depend on me to find that out. Well, Jeff only wanted to help out. I gave him the gun that was in your room. You what? Do you know where he went? Yes, he went to Ted Sloan's place. We've got to stop him. Stop him from what? Stop him from getting killed. The firing pin on that gun's been broken for years. Well, come on, maybe we can catch them. Sanford. Hell, 
almost got him on a horse stealing charge a couple of years ago. He's dismounting and coming in here, Uncle Roy. I'm going to tie it over here. I want to see what he's up to. Hey, Bert! Drake! Anybody home? Judge Bean. What are you doing here? I just stopped in to see the boys. They don't seem to be here. I'm going to be running along. Over to it. Get it good, lady. See what he put in that book. Read it for me. What do you want me to do with the six horses? Uncle Roy, I bet he's the man that switched horses on Jeff. Now, wait a minute. I don't know nothing about it. Who is this note for? I guess it was for you. You're not going to tie me up. No, but I'm sure going to try. Pick up that chair. going to get loose right away. Is that why he didn't tie him tight? Yeah, it was done on purpose so he could get away. I think he'll lead us to where Jeff is and maybe to Ted Sloan's killer. Sanford from warning him. He'll have to go through that canyon. You go over that way, Letty. I'll meet you down here. Time to lose. Now you wait here. I'll be right back. All right, the judge said to tie you up. Get on the ground and put your face down.
kill an unarmed man? I'm not a killer, I'm an executioner. I could kill you myself. I've no use for a man who shoots another man in the back. I'll handle it. The judge. to me and I'm going to be sorry. <laughs> Sanford left this note in a big book for somebody. It's mine. I don't know if it is or not. About them horses you switched on Jeff. Guess you was afraid Ted would find out what you was doing. What were you doing? Nothing. Nothing. The judge is making it all up. Whose gun is it? Why, it's Drake's. I was hoping he'd come for it. I found it across the street from where Ted Sloan was killed. I left it there figuring whoever used it would come back to get rid of the evidence. He's crazy. He even examined my gun that day. Men have been known to carry two. One gun looks just the same as another. Not when it's got a chipped handle. I'd know that gun anywhere. You'll pay for this killing, and you'll pay for it right now. Hold it, Over. mister. He killed my best friend. Man can't take the law in his own hands. You know that, Bert. You're under arrest, both of you. For what? For attempted assault with intent to kill. All right, now let's get back to Langtree. All right, let's go. Well, Burke and Drake are behind bars, and I can't wait to see them both up for trial. I find myself with the same feeling about your trial. My trial? You're charged with breaking jail, and you'll answer for aiding and abetting him. But, Judge... Uncle Rod! In this court, the law is for everybody. That goes for you, too. Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Guilty. Jeff, your fine will be one month's pay. Letty, you don't get that new dress I promised you. Well, Uncle Roy, you can't do that. What's that? You'll get us with contempt. We accept the sentence without comment, Your Honor. That's better. Now get out of here, the both of you, before I think up another charge. Come on, Letty. That'll teach him. <laughs> That'll teach him. <laughs> Letty, we sure got our hands full. <laughs> I can hear every steer, the sound of the thundering herd. It's so real, I can feel the warmth of a friendly word. So 
I know I must go to the land of the Pecos There to stay the 